Welcome back. Go ahead and grab that blanket. Butterflies start their lives out as eggs. So if you look at this tiny little egg right here, you're gonna get really tiny yourself because we're gonna act out the life cycle of a butterfly. So get really little. Are you little? Then go ahead and take this blanket and cover yourself with the blanket. The blanket acts like the leaf that the butterfly lays the egg underneath. The leaf protects the, the egg from the wind and the rain. After about three to five days, depending on the type of butterfly, but the caterpillar is going to hatch out of the egg, and that caterpillar is going to be really, really tiny. Look at how little it is. Now, caterpillars, their only job is to eat. So you are now a caterpillar. So I want you to pretend to eat, and you're going to pretend to eat for about seven days. It's a long time. And as you're eating, you're going to grow. And as you're growing, you're going to get really, really big, and then you become a really big caterpillar like this guy right here. This caterpillar's tummy is really, really full. So he needs to take a rest. So what you're gonna do, and this caterpillar's gonna do, is he's gonna spin a button of silk on a leaf. Did you do that? Button of silk on the leaf, and then he's gonna hang upside down on that button of silk, and then a big transformation's gonna happen. He's gonna turn into a green chrysalis. Now this chrysalis is the resting stage. So he's gonna rest, and there's not a lot gonna happen on the outside for a while, but a lot's happening on the inside. He's going through metamorphosis, it's a big change. On the outside, we know that he's ready because it's a big, there's a change on the outside we can see on the chrysalis. But first, I want you to take that blanket and I want you to wrap yourself in that blanket. I want you to rest as a chrysalis just for a minute. Our chrysalis here, he's gonna about seven days before he hatches. And then, in about seven days, we're gonna see this butterfly start to form, and we can see it in the chrysalis. And then, something exciting happens. Are you ready? Go ahead and break out of your chrysalis and pretend to be a butterfly. Now, if you don't have butterfly wings at home, that's okay. You can just use your imagination, or if you have fairy wings or any other types of wings at home, you can pretend to. Now, this activity, parents, doing this activity helps increase awareness of the natural world and builds gross motor skills. Now, you can do this at any point in the day that you want because you can be a butterfly and go through the life cycle at any time. Let's go look at a butterfly up close with a microscope. So this butterfly right here used to live in the butterfly garden here at the zoo. Butterflies have relatively short lives. So after they pass away in the garden, we can actually look at them up close and not hurt a butterfly. So I, because this butterfly has passed away, I'm gonna touch its wing and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So you see all that gray dust on my finger? That gray dust is what makes a butterfly wing special and also reasons why you shouldn't touch a live butterfly. Let's look at it up close with the microscope. So, ooh, look at all those shiny little pieces on my finger. So those shiny little pieces, those are all little tiny little scales that are on the butterfly wing that helps give it lift and helps it fly. Let's take a minute and look at the wing up, or the butterfly up close with the microscope and see other features we can see. My microscope sometimes takes a minute to, to get into focus. Oh gosh, look at that. You can see its eyes really well. You can see it's, there's little hairy parts right here. Ooh, and you can see the stripes on the antennae. Butterflies are really cool. Now friends, er, this act, doing this activity increases awareness of the natural world practices using scientific skills, and builds observation skills. Now, you can't do this at home because you may not have, you shouldn't have dead butterflies hanging around. So what you can do is you can go outside when the butterflies start coming around, and you can look outside with your eyes, and you can see if you notice 
the features of a butterfly. If it lands, maybe you look and you keep your hands to yourself and you look at it up close and can you see its eyes? Can you see its antennae? Okay, we're gonna go play a game or we're going to go learn about butter, more about butterflies. Hello, so you've probably seen butterflies about this, the size of my model right over here. Kind of like the monarch butterfly. It's about this big, you probably saw them flying around with Claire in the garden, but I'm going to teach you about butterflies that come in different sizes. So, over here I have one of the world's biggest butterflies, the Queen Alexandra birdwing. This butterfly can span up to nine inches wide. That's about the size of a dinner plate. This over here is the Western Pygmy Blue. This is one of the smallest butterflies in the world. It is about this size right over here, or the size of a penny. When you have some time later, I want you to try to find butterfly or objects around your house that are bigger, smaller, and the same size as these two butterflies right over here. But right now, we're gonna do an activity where we are going to make a prediction and see how close we are to our prediction. So we have our butterfly right over here, or I'm actually gonna use my dinner plate, and I'm going to use pennies, and I'm going to see how many small butterflies or the Western Pygmy Blues it takes to make a, uh, the wingspan of the Queen Alexandra Birdwing. So I'm going to predict seven, and I'll see if I'm correct. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my prediction was too small, but that's okay, because I'm going to figure it out eventually. Eight, nine, ten. So it takes ten Western Pygmy Blues to make up the wingspan of one Queen Alexandra. You could also do it at home and see how many butterflies it takes to make up this length, or how many butterflies this size, or the size of a paper clip it takes to measure up a dinner plate. Now we're going to go look at symmetry with a game over here. So I have another butterfly model right over here that shows some symmetry. So symmetry means that the butterfly's wings are mirror images of each other. So you can see that there's a green dot over here and there's an identical one on the other side right over here. So they're mirror images of each other. So right now, Claire and I are going to play a game where we are going to try and have a butterfly that is symmetrical or mirror images of each other. So I cut out shapes ahead of time. What you can do is use colored paper, fold it in half, and then just cut out your shapes using the scissor to get different shapes. You will want one shape for each of the players so that we can keep our butterfly symmetrical. You'll also want to either print out or draw a butterfly outline so you can play. So each of us is going to take one side of the game board. I'm going to take this side right over here and Claire's going to play on this side. So I'm going to put my folder right in the middle and I'm going to try to be as descriptive as I can with my pieces. And if I'm not being descriptive enough, Claire, you can ask me questions. So I am using the big green triangle right on top. Which way does it point? So I'm going to have it point. Um, so the longer side will be on top. Okay. Now I'm doing the blue rectangle. Big blue rectangle, and I'm going to put it on the bottom. Does it does it go tall wide or wide? So it's going to be wide. So wide. the big side will be on the bottom, or go across instead of up and down. Okay. And then I'm going to use a big red square right in the middle. All right. All right. Let's see if we manage to be descriptive enough for a butterfly that is symmetrical. Oh, we did it! We did pretty good! <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can take turns doing this, and both of these activities help practice um, the concept of symmetry, build fine motor skills, build spatial reasoning, and that one that we did earlier also did predictions. So Sandy, Sandy has one more activity for us. So I would like you to grab your paper towel or your coffee filter. 
some markers, or some bingo dotters. So we're going to make a symmetrical butterfly. So we're going to start with some paper towel. So I want you to take a paper towel and I'd like you to fold it in half. Just like this. And then you're going to use your scissors to cut out the wings of a butterfly. And then if I open it up, you can see it looks just like a butterfly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my markers and I have to be very patient for this. I'm going to put my marker on the the paper towel and just hold it for a moment and wait and see and you can see how the ink's kind of spreading out that note means I'm ready to go ahead and take that marker off I'm gonna put a couple dots on here I'm gonna change colors because I think, I think pink would look nice here too now remember Miss Zara said that Symmetry means that things are the same on both sides, like a mirror image. So if I open up my butterfly, I wonder if it's going to be a mirror image on both sides. Let's see. Oh my gosh, look at that, it is! So my dots are the same, and if I put a mirror in the middle, it would be the same on both sides. Now we're going to try it with the coffee filter. You need to make your coffee filter nice and flat. You're going to fold it in half. Now for the coffee filter, you have to, you want to try to do your dots along the outside. You don't want them down the middle part. So for my coffee filter, I'm going to use, I'm going to start with my bingo dotters. Again, I have to be patient. So I'm going to put it on there. I'm going to press and hold and wait for a second. And then I'm going to make a pattern and I'll press and hold, continuing to make a pattern. Do a couple more. You can also use the, the markers on the coffee filter. So I'm going to use my pink marker again. Again, you have to be patient with your markers, so you've got to press and hold and wait. Okay, now I want you to make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen when I open up this butterfly? Is it going to be symmetrical? Let's find out. Let's open it up. Oh my gosh, is it? It is, isn't it? Now, this doesn't look a lot like a butterfly. Does it look like one to you? Didn't think so. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of string and we're going to take and find that fold line that we made earlier. And we're going to take our fingers and scrunch up the coffee filter as we go down. We're going to take that string. We're going to tie it right here in the middle. Just one little loop will do. And look at that. We have a perfectly symmetrical butterfly. Now parents doing this activity practices the concept of symmetry, builds fine motor skills, and builds prediction skills. Thank you everybody for joining us today. We went over a lot of vocabulary words. We talked about the life cycle of a butterfly and we learned the words egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, butterfly, we saw the proboscis, the tongue that's on that butterfly. Uh, we also talked a lot about symmetry, the things that are the same on either side. So tonight, if you had a chance, go around the house and do what Zara suggested. Find things that are bigger than a dinner plate, so bigger than the world's biggest butterfly, or things that are smaller than a penny, smaller than the world's smallest butterfly. Or you can play the symmetry game with someone in your house, or you can make a butterfly and hang it up in one of your windows. We really appreciate everybody tuning in and listening. We'll have more resources and we want you to take care of each other and we'll see each other we'll see you all soon.